Good afternoon, everyone. This is our week 13 for ITA 6201 Data Structures and Algorithm. Topic, like stress algorithm, shortest path first. The objective is, at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to define like stress algorithm, the shortest path first, to get the shortest path algorithm in an easy way. Edger W. Dijkstra, in the year 1930 to 2002, he is a Dutch computer scientist, received Turing Award for contribution to developing programming languages. He also contributed to shortest path algorithm, also known as Dijkstra's algorithm. Reverse Polish Notation and Related Shunting Yard Algorithm, the Multiprogramming System, the Bankers Algorithm, and the Self-Stabilization and Alternative Way to Ensure the Reliability of the System. Where's my motivation? Many problems can be modeled using graphs with weights assigned to their edges, like the airline flight times, finding the cheapest flight home, telephone communication cost, computer network response times, fastest way to get to school by car. Dexter's algorithm is a solution to the single source shortest path problem in graph theory. The extras algorithm is used in SPF or the shortest path first, which is used in the routing protocol or OSPF, the open shortest path first. Works on both directed and undirected graphs. However, all edges must have a non-negative weights. Input, weighted graph, G is equal to E, which is the edges, a pair of vertices. An edge connects the vertices that define, and in some cases, the vertices can be the same. And V stands for vertices. It could also be called as nodes that locates the vertices with labels. And the source vertex is an element of vertices, such that all weights are non-negative. Output the lengths of shortest path or the shortest paths themselves from a given source vertex to all other vertices. Given the problem of finding the shortest path from a source vertex to all other vertices in the graph. So given the nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay. So we have to know the importance of Dijkstra's algorithm. Many more problems that you might at first think can be cast as shortest path problems, making Dijkstra's algorithm powerful and general tool. For example, Dijkstra's algorithm is applied to automatically find directions between the physical locations such as the driving directions on websites like MapQuest or Google Maps. Uh, best example also is when you are going to a place wherein you don't know, okay? So you use the app Waze. It gives you the shortest way or the route on going to the destination. It is used for solving a variety of shortest path problems arising in plant and facility layout, robotics, transportation, and VLSI, or the very large scale integrated design. Routing, it is a protocol that specifies how routers communicate with each other, disseminating information that enables them to select routes between any two nodes in a computer network. In a networking or telecommunication applications, Dijkstra's algorithm has been used for solving the minimum delay path problem, which is the shortest path problem. 
The goal is to find the path for data packets to go through a switching network with minimum delay. So given the example, as you can see on the left side is a navigation, wherein it's about the, we're in the nodes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, order of 30 sets. This algorithm has been used in GPS navigating system. For a given source vertex in the graph, the algorithm can be used to find the shortest path from a single starting vertex to a single destination vertex. For example, if the vertices of the graph represent cities and edge path cost represent driving distance, distances between the pair of cities connected by a direct road. So this is the uh, distances. Dexter's algorithm can be used to find the shortest route between one city and a destination city. So this one is the destination. Which one is the shortest path? This algorithm is widely used in routing protocol system. It is also called the single source shortest path problem in which the shortest path from a single source to all other vertices has to be found. In the next sample, for a given source vertex or the node in the group, the algorithm finds the path with the shortest path between that vertex and every other vertices. A Java applet has been used to show the process step by step. So given the example done in the job applet, okay, we have the red arrows, okay, and then the gray arrows as well as the red orange arrows. Red arrows point to nodes reachable from the start A, which is zero, to the distance or the destination distance. The distance to B is equal to four, B is equal to 1 with the arrows. Node D has the minimum distance, which is 1. The other path to D visits another red node and will be longer than 1. On the next step, node D will be colored orange to indicate 1 is the length of the shortest path to D. Okay, so as, you say, as we say, I said, this is the shortest, which is one. Red arrows point to nodes, reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to B is equal to four, this one. Distance to E, we have 33. And then this distance to G is 20. Three. Okay, this one. Node B has the minimum distance, which is four. Any other path to B visits another red node and will be longer than B, than four. On the next step, node will be colored orange to indicate four is the length of the shortest path to B. So we'll have this now on the step three. Red arrows point to nodes reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to C is equal to six. Distance to E is 16. And distance to G is 23. Okay, so you will notice we have already three we're talking of the three destination. Node C has the minimum distance, which is equal to six. There are no other arrows coming into C. On the next step, node C will be colored orange to indicate that six is the length of the shortest path to C. Step four. Red arrows point to nodes reachable from nodes that already have 
a final distance. The distance E is equal to 16. That's one. The F you will see is the distance is 80 or uh, 80. The G is the distance is 18. Okay, this one. Note E has the minimum distance, which is 16 only. There are no other arrows coming into E. On the next step, E will be colored orange to indicate that 16 is the length of the shortest path to E. Let's have step four, five. Red arrows points to nodes reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to F, which is 80, G is equal to 23, and H is equal to 49, that's one. J is equal to 18. Node J has the minimum distance. Any other path to visit another red node and will be longer than 18. Node J will be colored orange to indicate that 18 is the length of the shortest path to J. Red arrows point nodes reachable from the nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to F is equal to 26. That's one. The node for the distance G is equal to 23. The H is equal to 49. Notice that the distance to F has changed. Okay? So this one. 13 and 16. Okay? That gives you 49. Notice that the distance to F has changed. Node G has the minimum distance. Other, any other path to G visits another red node and will be longer than 23, which is this one. Node G will be colored orange to indicate 23 is the length of the shortest path to G. Step seven, red arrows point to nodes reach, reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to F is equal to 26, this one. H is equal to 33. Notice that the distance to H is, has changed, okay? So this one, 26 and 11, which is now 37. Node F has the minimum distance, okay, which is 26. Any other path to visit F, another red node, will be longer than 26. Node F will be colored orange to indicate that 26 is the length of the shortest path to F. Okay, step eight. Red arrows point to nodes reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance to H is equal to 33, that's one. I is equal to 37. Node H has the minimum distance, which is 33 only. Any other path to H visits another red node and will be longer than 33. Node H will be colored orange to indicate 33 is the length of the shortest path to H. Okay, so we have already the color. The last step is the red arrows points to nodes reachable from nodes that already have a final distance. The distance is I is equal to 30. Seven. So this one. 
There are no other rows coming in through I. Nodes I will be colored orange to indicate that 37 is the length of the shortest path to I. Algorithm has finished. Follow orange arrows from start node to any node to get the shortest path to the node. The length of the path is written in the node. So if you're going to follow, you can read this one, okay? So A, and then follow B, okay? So we have the arrow six, and then 18, okay? 18, 26, then 37, okay? So thus, like stress algorithm works everywhere. While it finds the shortest path with lower running time, it does not work with negative weight of edges in some networks. In this case, Bellman Ford algorithm can be used, which is very similar to Dijkstra's algorithm, but instead of selecting the minimum weight node, not yet process to relax. It simply relaxes all the edges and that's this n minus one times where n is the number of vertices so thank you very much for listening good luck god bless and keep safe this is professor beth Santana, your olc for data structures and algorithms